Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the CanadianGameDevs.com podcast, episode number 174 for January 25th for patrons, January 27th for everyone else, 2021. There's a new president, Steve. There's, um, what else has happened? That was it. That was the big one. Yeah, that was a big one. Does the internet yeah. seem calmer to you? It seems cringy. I was like the Bernie meme watching all the liberals and now like Ben Shapiro is making versions of the Bernie meme. And I'm like, ah, it's dead. Brands are making it. Brands need to stop making memes, Steve. I think I sent you that one, right? One sound, my town. I follow them on Instagram, my hometown. They made a Bernie meme. I was like, oh my God. It's too like, much. Two days afterwards, I was like, I'm tired of this. I like the, we, we did one. There's one of him looking at his phone and I just put that on the left and then com on the right and it, it, it was cute and it was like close enough to when it happened i was like it's still kind of funny well it also wasn't so, the sitting on the the thin the park the bench the chair no, one. it was him on the phone reading all the canadian gaming news events jobs that we have over at canadiangamedevs.com because of course actually if anyone on the planet would probably be less likely to play a video game much less care that's from canada it would probably be senator bernard sanders but that's okay you know who do care does care, Steve? Me. You, me, and our patrons who have helped us keep this site running. You can join them over at patreon.com slash devs. Get two-day early access to the podcast, game giveaways, discounts for King Gaming events like EGLX, shoutouts at the end of every episode, and the knowledge that you're helping us keep doing what we do. And, Steve, at our highest tier of shoutout, uh, we will plug whatever you want at the start of the show. Your project, your portfolio, if you're, if you're trying to get out there, get your name heard, like... Eric Beer over at thebotbook.com, the B O T book.com. Check out their work, see if there's interesting things on there that you want to check out. Eric's also lovely in our Discord. He's been chatting with us maybe about getting a game jam started up on itch.io. We would love to do that. That's one of our lofty ambitions for the year. Mm-hmm. Eric's a great guy. You should check out all his work, thebotbook.com. I want to also plug. All the ways you can support the indigenous movements across this country, from Land Back Lane in Ontario to the Wet'suwet'en in BC, the Mi'kmaq out here in Nova Scotia. There are links to the supports, ways to put your money where your mouth is. I see a lot of people, myself included on Twitter, saying a lot of the, the treatment is bullshit. Well, you can do something. You can help. You can help. Um, you do that at the top of the show notes. I have links there for you. And watch the Night of the Indigenous Devs on YouTube. If the way you want to support is buying... Games made by indigenous creators, which is pretty cool if you ask me, Steve. Mm-hmm. I moved events back to the top of the show. We're going to do jobs, events, news, wish list. The old format, I'm, I'm bringing it back. I think it works so that uh, the people who just want to skip to the news or wish list or what we've been playing, uh, they'll have a table of contents at the top of the show notes. And at the top is where we, we, do, the, we do the paperwork, Steve. Up here, we, you know when you shuffle some paper, sh- shuffle it off the desk, make that little noise? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, sorry, I'm, that's what we do at the top. I'm. I wanted to see what Bernie meme Ben Shapiro did, and this guy. Tw- I had no because I don't go to his Twitter. I don't give a fuck. This guy no. tweets so much. I'm scrolling so far to find it. <laughs> I'm like, it's basically, he he recreated just him in the chair. That it wasn't even that good of a meme. All right, I'm closing this because I don't want Google to be like, oh, you want some Ben Shapiro content? Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Let's let's start with some jobs, Steve. Uh. Of course, Etchemas Stalwin and Games in Ontario, uh, Toronto specifically, is looking for an intern video game programmer. They're working on Hill Agency, a native futuristic detective game, uh, and they're ramping up production, got some funding, got some roles. You should check that out. Canuck Play, hot off the heels of Doug Flutie's Maximum Football 2020, and ramping up pre-production on their next big original game, is looking for a senior Unity game developer, a Unity game developer, and a 3D modeler for Static Objects. They're in Peterborough, Ontario. Sleeping Giant Interactive in Toronto is looking for a character animator rigger. And Stormy Shore out here on the beautiful East Coast in Paradise, Newfoundland, is looking for a lead 3D artist. All those jobs in the show notes and on CanadianGameDevs.com slash jobs. Events. Steve, Global Game Jam is happening. The date's are set January 27th to 31st. And uh, for those who don't know, in pr- places where people are allowed to congregate, like out here on the East Coast, there will be uh, physical sites set up uh, because our province isn't on lockdown. So you can go game jam with some people. Uh, mm. Those should be announced this week in the lead up to the event, um, which is happening Wednesday, the 27th. So the day is going live for everyone else. 
I've participated twice. I had a great time. I will not be participating this year. But if you're interested at all in game making, the process of working with a team on a game, this is the way to do it. Even if you're like, I don't have anything I could contribute, like just hanging out and like looking at what people are doing, chipping in, giving your feedback. Um, yeah, usually there's like an artist, a programmer, and you know a couple other people just fill in loose spots. It's a good time. I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. The Game Breakfast Audio Club is returning February 3rd, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Hang out with some other people on Discord, drink your coffee, talk about game audio. Steve's been once. It was a good time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was good. Unity Club from Dames Making Games in Toronto is going virtual February 8th, 6.30 p.m. Check out that. Dirty Rectangles will be back February 10th with a stream of different developers showing off their work, talking to the chat. February 10th at 8 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash Dirty Rectangles and the Dames Making Games annual general meeting is at the end of february on the 27th 1 p.m eastern you can check them out dmg.to you can just become a member and then you can go to that meeting see what they're all about let's jump into the news steve i got i got i got a a spread of news this week and i want to talk about it with you Mm -hmm. first up interactive ontario is launching a new hashtag stay home on handle on not handle hashtag on twitter that they're hoping to encourage people to stay home and play games made in ontario uh so if you check out the news story uh, it'll be in the show notes i put all the news there and also hashtag stay home on on twitter you can see all the different games they're promoting games we've talked about on the site of course like later daters foregone canuck plays maximum football grindstone they got a whole bunch of games there they got cube samurai run from redmi games game i helped uh port to steam let's do the part let's, let's say the full list let's say let's like, oh it's it's long but oh i know yeah uh okay. a full apart the last sky i haven't heard of this game and this is also like i'm just like i look for games other elsewhere that we can cover yeah from little so f- guy games where are they i'm, I'm learning all the, these new things i'm going off the top so foregone from big blue bubble which i liked good day just part one and two i haven't played two yet so funny steve when we were young from bluish green productions uh, Maximum Football 2020 from Canuck Play, Grindstone from Capybara, Rogue Legacy Mwah. 2 from Mwah. Cellar Door Games, Embers of Miram from Creative Byte Studios, Easy Platinum, which I don't have, but it is easy. <laughs> What's it on? Uh, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Steam, and Switch. Okay, okay. Uh, Warframe from Digital Extremes, Quackman 1 and 2. Of oh, Best Ongoing Canadian Game 2020. Warframe, yeah. Uh, Dune C from Frolic Labs. Mouse Hunt from Hit Grab, Way of the Pacifist from Household Games, Mighty like Fight Federation from Comey Games, A Fold Apart, my game of the year last year from Lightning Rod Games, The Last Sky from Little Guy Games, Stretchbot Little from Guy M5 Games. Games, Star Renegades, a game I, I, I've downloaded, I still haven't got back in yet, I need, I need to do it. Steve, it's Halcyon on Game and, Pass. I know, and I, that's where I downloaded it, yeah. Halcyon, okay. And Halcyon Sick from Massive Damage Games, Future Grind from Milk Bag Games, Title Shock from Moonray Studios, Arrowheads from Oddbird Studios, nice Cube Samurai as you mentioned from you from Steven, no from uh, I did. Red Meat Games. <laughs> I was a small part in the creation of that game. Um, Henry Danger Crime Warp from Snowden Studios. I don't know that one's interesting. Uh, They're on mobile. Keep talking, nobody explodes, which is a fairly well known game. VR. Uh, Kimono. From Sticky Brain Studios, Terrarium from Studio. Stitch Media, Dash Quest Two from Tiny Titan Studios, uh, and we'll, you know Watch Dogs Legion from Ubisoft. Okay, fine. <laughs> Ava's Manor, a, sol- <laughs> a solitaire story from Yukin Games, Bla- Beat Blast from Wooly Wallace yeah. Games, which is one that I want to get back into. The ones they mm. have listed, you know what they don't have listed here? Oh, they have a, they, they're missing a bunch. Like it was just a yeah. Uh, but I fine. saw them get them submitted from their Discord. They're like, hey, we're, we're putting together this list. Uh, should send us your game so oh uh, i see actually no and I was, i'm the game i was about to mention is not in ontario so never mind there you go so yeah if you uh, play any of these games during your lockdown at home tweet it out stay home o n capital o n also follow interactive ontario they're cool they do free programming for developers and and other people through eventbrite they put them on all the time they're a fun little community on discord you should follow them check them out I wanted to Steve. check out this when we were young because Blue Screen Productions, I remember them like from the air, early days of TorontoGameDevs.com and I didn't think they were still around. So I'm just going to... What's gonna, the game called? When We Were Young. 
Oh, it's on, on itch. itch.io. Yeah, it's oh, on itch.io. Okay. Yo, I'm pl- I can play it in the browser. Good stuff. Yeah, nice. Good stuff. All right, Steve. Big bit of news. Another Canadian studio now owned by Tencent, the Chinese mega conglomerate. Clay Interactive, Clay Like Play from Vancouver, makers of Don't Starve, Grifflands, Mark of the Ninja, Don't Starve Together, Oxygen Not Included, prolific indie studio, now under the ownership of Tencent. I'm going to read from the official post from Clay founder Bigfoot over on the forums of Clay Entertainment. Clay Entertainment, sorry. Quote, I want to take this moment to announce that we have agreed to a deal for Tencent to purchase a majority stake in Clay Entertainment. As a part of this agreement, Clay retains full autonomy of creative and operations across all aspects of the studio, including projects, talent, and more. What's going to change is that there are going to be some boring accounting changes that we will need to adjust to. Other than that, I will continue running the studio as I have before with no changes to staffing projects or other operations. Why are we doing this, Steve? Clay has been around for 15 years, and we have made many changes over the years in order to respond to the changing world. Consistently, my wish has been to enable people to do their best creative work, to learn to grow, to not have to worry about finances, and to be able to enjoy their lives outside the studio. This has not changed. This partnership helps us navigate a changing industry and helps us focus on what we do best, making unique experiences that no one else can. I explain who is Tencent, um, how does this affect Clay Games in China, uh, and then why Tencent? We looked at a lot of different companies, and over the years, we've worked with a large number of publishers and distributors. Tencent is the only company that we felt would let us retain the level of control that we demand. We've been working with Tencent for years. Remember, uh, um, Don't Starve, Never Home. Uh, and even at points where we disagreed, they were always willing to work with us to find the best solution for everyone involved and defer to us when we felt strongly. So it's got a bunch of positive uh actually some of these comments well it's like congrats um <laughs> there's one funny comment where someone wrote this can be okay is tencent even the bad guy and so then someone quoted that saying well most of it's owned by chinese government but let's not get political here edit guess we are getting political <laughs> <laughs> oh man he's he's a the founder has been replying to people as we're going uh would the right stay with the studio or does tencent now have the power to license it to other studios quote we're still going to be managing the IP that Clay creates. If anything, Tencent has shown real respect to us and consistently deferred to us in how we present our work, which is one of the reasons we chose to partner with them. I don't know, Steve. Um, hopefully I can still say Free Hong Kong in the chat and Don't Starve Together. It looks, sounds like I will be able to, but uh, yeah, it's it's happening. We got Warframe, a uh, parent company bought by... Tencent at the end of 2020, like literally the last week of December. Now Clay, it looks like Tencent's... I'm I'm, I'm gobbling up some Canadian studios. (laughs) Yeah, you know, another Canadian studio is not Canadian. Um, Someone, we were talking on Discord, I forget where, in the political channel or whatever, but it seems like Tencent doesn't really stick their hands in stuff and get involved with things you know it does seem like they're just kind of there and then just like all right go make us money because you we kind of trust you Mm. it seems um i feel like clay might be like reading these games path of exile league legends PUBG, clash of clans fortnite and more like clay is like way smaller than any of those Mm -hmm. so it's kind of interesting that they're it's like are they now going to dive into the indie space because i'm sure a lot of indie studios as much as we say, you know, Tencent, China, government, et cetera, evil, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. You know, it's hard to turn down the security that Tencent can provide in terms of Oh, we, of we joke about Tencent buying Canadian game devs all the time. Oh, yeah. We, I mean, we would absolutely entertain us. and offer. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so, uh, I, know, uh, as long as Clay continues being Clay, like, I, there's not an issue, but it does kind of just, you know, stink a little bit. You can see the arms race starting, like... Ten cents buying, you know, Warframe major stakeholders and League of Legends and other stuff, and buying Clay in the same way Microsoft, an American company, bought Bethesda for like seven billion dollars, but is also buying like Double Fine and other small indie studios. Yeah, that's so fair. There's definitely an arms race starting to just get the majority of a of the game market under your roof. So I don't know if Ten Cent is planning on consolidating a lot of these projects into some sort of streaming service. I doubt it, but they could. I wonder if they're they going to come it. with their own console. <laughs> you know, just like, no, don't, don't do that. Please don't do that. The 10 cent station. 
<laughs> no. Anyway, that's just just something I've been thinking about. Like as um, all these vertical monopolies are being established, instead of like making new stuff that Microsoft's studio gobbling up does mirror Tencent studio gobbling up. You know. Yeah, I guess the 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 counterpoint to that or the shining thing is like there will always be indie. There will always be like the indie games scene is like so huge that like. Even if Clay, even if like Clay was like destroyed by Tencent tomorrow, mm-hmm. there's still hundreds of of great indie studios that are self owned that are you know that you could really help out by buying you know their game or some DLC for their games or whatever. So <clears throat> I got what you're saying because it's like the movie theater movie industry how Disney like makes makes like eighty percent of the money in the movies. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that. You know that we're not there yet, I guess. But you know, this is a this is a pathway to getting there. Where just one day, ten it's like ten cent owns like sixty percent of of whatever. Like, imagine if ten cent buys like EA or Ubisoft or or Activision. That would be. I was thinking that would, like that'd be giant. I if if the news story was EA buy, bought Clay, I'd be like, oh, it's over. Whoops! Like that's it. Like that. Yeah. Like the amount of studios EA just buys, they make one game that they shoehorned a bunch of microtransactions in and then shuts them down. Like it's a miracle cool. Bioware still makes games like the amount of studios that EA buys makes it for a game for two and then just shutters and liquidates. Like I would be more scared of EA buying clay than 10 cent. Yeah, that's fair. No, that's fair. I don't know if 10 cents really closed any of their things. Like if anything, well, they've grown, right? They, Fortnite, see, they don't Epic. do it the same way. Like, like EA buys the studio and usually leadership kind of leaves or like Activision buys a studio and leadership kind of leaves. It, they're ten cents buying a majority stake, which is different. I think. Yeah, that's true. Like they, you, yeah, they own at least fifty one percent or more. Mm-hmm. Like, like Microsoft Game Studios is like a, a collection of studios that are directly owned by Microsoft, and now includes like Double Fine and Bethesda Softworks and stuff. Yeah. No, Whereas Ten Cent now just has like fifty one percent of Clay. Yeah. 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 Anywho, how, how big, big is Clay? Big like, story. how many? How many? How many devs? Yeah, or how many? I, it's got to be a couple hundred because Don't Serve Together is huge. All right, I don't know if I believe Wikipedia because it says thirty-five. That's not right. Let's go to LinkedIn. LinkedIn usually has a good. Uh, Doesn't that just give a range where it's like one to fifty, how, fifty to four hundred? LinkedIn usually has like. So there's ninety-one clay employees on LinkedIn. Um, that doesn't tell me how many. Okay, wait. So company size eleven to fifty, but ninety one current employees on LinkedIn. Anyway, we don't know. I'm guessing it's like fifty to a hundred, but um, especially given the the size of projects they make, it's like very tight indie, linear, and couple like auction not included and don't start together. We're like they're dipping the multiplayer, yeah. but they're they're probably sm- like one or two small teams within that like prototype and work on games and then shift resources onto a full production like for oxygen not included yeah true to answer your question probably like 50 to 100 that's fair you know who is still indie steve oh i guess clay's indie but (laughs) only by midnight the edmonton based indie game studio working on their first project curve space has landed a publisher in maximum games you might remember maximum games from farming simulator conan exiles the sinking city vampire some big, like, I don't know, you would say, like, double A, like, like mid, not quite triple A, not quite indie, big projects. Uh, they have signed Curve Space from Only by Midnight, who will be their publishing partner, which is super exciting. Congrats to them. Check out our interview with them uh, in your feeds. Uh, just search King Games, um Only by Midnight interview. They're super rad. The game is super fun. They have a great Discord community that's been helping them along the way with testing and listening to feedback, and they have a really passionate small community that's only only grown since i've been in that little discord oh, they're hitting yeah. everything steve they, they have the ps5 logo now on I, the bottom. I, I just saw that so yeah. <laughs> uh so yeah still aiming for 2021 uh you know do, do what you gotta do now that you have a publisher if you want to take some more time obviously you know take some business advice from us un, unrequested the ps5 and ps4 icons like move when you hover over them but they don't click which is sad yeah i assume they will one day one day. One day. I'm always con- I'm wondering 
Yeah, okay, anyways. I, I wonder if, like, it's just PS5 because it'll work. Like, it's like a bonus. Like, of course it'll be on PS5 because it's really a PS4 game. Or mm-hmm. if it'll actually have, like, PS5 enhancements or whatever. Or, or whatever. Same with the Xbox Series S and X. But, anyways. That's sweet. Anyways, that is. We're, we're, super, we're super happy for them. So, congrats. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to, to play more Curve Space. And they got gifts on their Steam page, too. Which they do. Have, they, happy. they have a good Steam page. Yeah. They don't have <laughs> the still have the WordPress logo for their site. I can sh- I get, well, I can walk you. Th- I use WordPress a lot. Just go into WP Admin, drag a little hundred by hundred icon, a little spider or something. <laughs> you know, in the tab at the top of Chrome, I see you. I, I see used, you. I haven't used WordPress in years. All right, Steve. My contender for best ongoing game, Apex Legends, is. Getting to season eight on February second, Steve. They're destroying my favorite map. Kings Canyon oh, really? is going to be obliterated oh, no. as part of the the story of this, which makes me really sad because Kings Canyon. I, like whenever Kings Canyon's in rotation, like I message my friends like King Canyon on for the next hour, go go go, and we like jump on and like play as many matches within that hour, two hours we can on Kings Canyon, and then it goes to the other new ones. I don't like the new maps, but I understand why you have to do new content to keep people playing and all that. I, I would play version 1.0 Kings Canyon every day for the rest of my life, but I'm not the typical <laughs> player and you got to accommodate the players who actually spend money on your game. Yeah. I you don't it. even, you don't even give them money. So they don't give a I, fuck. I would have bought it. February 2nd, Steve, what are you doing? Cause I would love to play the new season apex with you. Oh uh, yeah. We'll play. Yes. So, what are, so what else do they do? So what are they doing to the map? Do they go into it or? Um, there's like a, a five minute, it's really pretty. Like they're, they're obviously doing like the overwatch route of like their story trailers that sort of flesh out the world. And, uh, it usually introduce the new legend, uh, who is fuse, I think. Yeah. It's yeah. Like I it. think fuse, um, she's got a sick looking undercut and quite the grimace on her face. Um, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to, I like I like seeing it, and then I just wish it was Kings Canyon. So yeah, anyway, Vancouver, staffing up to 100 devs for a respawn there uh, to exclusively work on Apex. This is probably going to be one of the biggest Apex or biggest Canadian games ongoing uh, for the rest of our lives, Steve. <laughs> Until so just help me get out. to that 100 percent trophies, and then I'll help you. I'll help you. And then Until I'll Titan, never Titan, think Titan about the Fall game 3. ever again. Please, please make Titanfall three. Uh, Alright, Steve. I, I, Time for, I really oh, you got more to say? No, I'd, I'd, I'd just be really down to play Titanfall 3. But Me too, me too. It's probably not coming anytime soon. So, Best first-person shooter ever made. Mm. 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 Let's move on to wishlist this, Steve. Inspired <laughs> by Steve and Brett's frequent wishlisting of games while we were talking about them on the show. In this new segment, I highlight... Not new anymore. I've been doing it for like a year or two years. In this segment... I highlight three upcoming Canadian made games that Steve has to add to his wish list right now. And I got some good ones. They're always good, but this I'm excited for these games, Steve. First up, Fire Tonight by Reptoid Games in Toronto, Ontario. Come in winter 2021. It is winter 2021, so I'm, I'm assuming soon. Um, quote, <clears throat> A narrative puzzle game about two people trying to find their way back together in a city of fire. This game looks super cute, Steve, and it's got kind of the, mm, I don't know, it's always tough comparing art styles, but I would say it's kind of like a, like a third-person platforming adventure game. Um, mm-hmm. You've got these, these two characters, uh, Devin and his girlfriend, Maya. Maya. Uh, they're separated. The year's 1990 before cell phones and the internet. They're on their own, wandering about. Uh, part of the city's on fire. They're trying to figure out where the other one is. So you can see them like going to pay phones or like trying to figure out how to get into contact with each other. Um, there's indoor like sort of point and click uh, stuff going on, and then there's like run around in a 3D space, spin the camera stuff going on. Yeah, it's I'm more intrigued by the the point and click stuff. To be perfectly honest. I'm looking at a section in a garden where there's like people with se- or security guards with flashlights. You're obviously trying to avoid. Mm. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty sweet. Um, I'm kind of interested in like what the fire, like what's going on in the city. If it'll explode, <laughs> there's that. pink fire everywhere. 
Yeah, I'm. I am more. I, I do like the point and click stuff too a little bit more. But the art style is pretty cool because like the the pink fire is like everything else is like a blue or dark blue um, hue to it, and it takes mm-hmm. it takes place at night, so everything's like dark. Whereas then the fire like really contrasts that, so it, it looks pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, I mean, and and I like the studio's previous game, Fossil Hunters too. That was a lot of fun, <clears throat> and uh, Easy Platinum too. If you want to pick it up, <laughs> of course it was, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask: um, Is Fire Tonight from Reptoid Games in Toronto on your Steam wish list? Yes, it is. Excellent. Sounds like you had something else you wanted to add there. No, no, I'm just excited. I'm excited too. Next up, Steve. This, this one. Oh boy, Kaiju Wars by Foolish Mortals in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Makers of Radio General, a uh, game we streamed, talked about, covered, interviewed. Very How do you spell good it? game. Kaiju, K-A-I-J-U, Wars. Uh, it's releasing, quote, when it's done, according to the Steam play- page. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's essentially, like, kind of like Into the Breach is very small, uh, tile-based, um, turn-based tactics game where there's a bunch of tanks and, and cities and there's a kaiju. You play... Out a kaiju movie. Oh, I didn't do the thing. Quote, <clears throat> play out a kaiju, kaiju movie as the hopelessly outclassed military in this stylish 2D turn-based strategy game. Construct buildings and defend your city with the cannon fodder tanks, jets, and more as they devastating kaiju grow in power with every attack. Dude, look at this game. Tell me this game doesn't look sick. It's like a NES-style strategy game or whatever, like the... the um like the graphics are kind of remind me of like that, that, that era or whatever, but the monsters are more detailed. It's pretty sweet. I, I, is Kaiju, is that, does that just mean like, like Godzilla, I think Godzilla like monster. The, Godzilla's a Kaiju, you know, mm. dude, this it game looks, looks so sweet. sick. Oh, it looks cool. Oh, Definitely. Man. Like I'm, I'm still unclear. Am I playing as the Kaiju or the army? I assume the Kaiju. Um, no, command the army. Play tanks and jets and the monsters kaiju. path. Interesting. There's five unique creatures, each specializing in different <laughs> types of destruction that mutate over time to get new devastating abilities. Um, Embark on a campaign. Play missions with from all the world as you progress through the very campaign. Test your wits in tactical puzzles. Command dozens of units at large scale scenarios and fend off repeated attacks while developing your city economically in city defense missions. So yeah, you play as the army. What I'm liking here actually. Create your own battles. Create your own city or scenario. Simple and easy to use scenarios can be crafted in minutes using the drag and drop map editor and then share it online, mm. which I think that's pretty sweet. Leaderboards? Um, yeah. Nice. You thought being mayor of the world's greatest city was all about zoning bylaws. Then the kaiju came. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. This game looks great, Steven. It follows on Radio General was a, a real-time strategy game where you're playing as like a commander in world war ii and you're commanding your troops from the tent you're radioing in and trying to like move the pieces on the board as to where they are and make sure the invasion or attack or battle goes successfully this sort of falls in the trend of that like strategy game Mm -hmm. but is going turn-based um 2d sprite art not the 3d um model art that made up radio general so I, i just love that they went with like a very different style but still like I'm assuming drawing on what they learned a lot from designing their first turn-based, uh, or sorry, their first strategy game, going from real time to turn-based. I think it looks great. Yeah. Now you got to combine the two. You got to make a World War yeah. One kaiju <laughs> army game where you control with uh, with a mic. Has anyone done kaiju in war? Probably. World War. Uh, maybe. Well, I mean, Godzilla started because of World War Two. Right. The time like, that was the thing. But I always, I do. I do have a soft spot for like this is this is beside the point of kaiju wars, but I do have a soft spot for like mashing um, genres like that. Mm. Like, remember uh, Alien or Cowboys and Aliens? <laughs> the no. movie. Oh, the movie! Oh my lord! <laughs> and then the Red Dead Redemption zombie undead nightmare. DLC, that was great. So I I like that stuff. But anyways, kaiju wars wars is not that, but um, it look it does look sweet. Is it? on your steam wish list yes it is excellent last game today 
on wish list this, Steve, is Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator. Art by Julia Minamata, who you might remember from previous wish list this segment for Crimson Diamond, their classic point-and-click adventure game. They are doing the art on this game with Rit Nelson, who's a uh, narrative game designer. Uh, I got a chance to meet him at PAX South last year. Super nice guy. Worked on Hy- Hypnospace Outlaw, a bit of an indie darling. I think won some indie game awards and has just been making a whole bunch of other games. Their, their project, a space... No, an airport run by dogs has been development for a while. I've been following. It was fun. Uh, but this is a, is a joint project between Julia and Rit Nelson and some other developers, uh, highlighting because Julia lives and works in Canada. Releasing 2021, you can wishlist it on Steam. Quote, Buy, sell, and trade organs in a strange and evolving universe. Dive into the quivering innards of alien capitalism in a sci-fi body horror market tycoon game <laughs> you didn't know you needed. Oh, man, Steve. That's such a great pre- <laughs> Steve. Come on. <laughs> buy, buy, buy. Feel, sell, sell, sell. This makes me feel bad about <laughs> all the stock stuff that I've been diving into and all the GameStop shit that's been happening this last week. But it's pretty, that's a great concept. Great, everyone great has idea. them, and everyone wants them. You are an organ trader, the funnel for the fleshy meat parts in strange, evolving, and desperate universe full of clients. Contend with the cutthroat organ market. Trade viscera with dubious figures. Create and download new content using an accessible slate of modding capabilities. Keep vampire leech organs from devouring the rest of the goods in your cargo hold. Flood galaxies with meat. Make a profit. <laughs> come on steve look so like it essentially looks like there's multiple like parts to the game so i'm looking at one screen that's like like a real-time trading stock market where you're like buying selling and like the lines moving up and down then you have your like inventory you have mm-hmm. people looking for certain things who are talking to you there and then all of this is like this there's tabs at the bottom you go back and forth from and there's like a whole bunch of different aliens and human looking characters who are like trying to buy trying to sell what Come on, Steve. Look at this game. It's good. What's the... Um, about halfway through the trailer, there's like a sort of grid and they're like dragging some organs or something. Is that the inventory, you think? Yeah. So you want to keep yeah. like the, the flesh-eating organs away from the other organs. So I th- there might be some like inventory management stuff. Like it just looks whack. There's a lot going on. Love it. And the, and the art style is like really cool. Like this sort of eighties computer looking style and Mm -hmm. um, kind of old, old computer style. I I like it. Um, Which I can tell, uh, I can tell Julia's worked on it because of looking at her other work. This, this feels (laughs) so Julia. Yeah. This is sick. Also, I looked at Crimson uh, Diamond. It's come out yet, but still, uh, still not out. Although you can download the demo. So she does, um, she does like developer streams on her Twitch. I tune into one and it's pretty interesting watching her work on nice. it. Nice. I have to ask Steve is space warlord organ trading simulator on your steam wish list. Yes, it is. Excellent. If you want us to cover your game on the segment, we want to cover your game, get it to us. Contact Canadian com. join our discord, plug it in shameless plugging. We will talk about it. That's it for wish list. This Steve, what did we talk about on Discord this week for Discord discussion? We talked a little bit with uh, Blake and Dragon Slumber and I were talking about retro game music, Undertale, Shovel Knight. I guess retro game music kind of like these are modern games that are trying to make game game music that sounds like it would come out of your TV playing the NES in the eighties. You know, mm. Mm. I, are there any particular ones that jump out to you? We we covered a lot of like Undertale and Shovel Knight. I would argue two of the biggest ones. Undertale doing a lot more modern stuff with like acoustic guitars with chip tune but shovel knight straight up sounds like a nes soundtrack I'm trying to think i'm trying to think of the messenger i think it was chip um mm. maybe cyber shadow when it comes out in a couple days Ooh, hype for cyber shadow oh i'm i'm very very excited for cyber shadow um but i can't uh off the top of my head to be honest like when it comes to music and audio like i kind it kind of i don't notice it and this is like all parts of media like television movies video games whatever i just i i'm kind of an idiot when it comes to music so I, i'm probably not a great person to, <laughs> to ask because i i don't remember so i'm sorry we also talked a bit in discord this week about the resident evil uh reveal stuff did you right. did you watch that stream i actually missed it i had to go i had a dentist appointment which we also talked in the discord <laughs> um I had a dentist appointment and I was like, okay, at five o'clock when I get back, like I was, I was going to get back around four thirty or whatever. 
I'll watch it. And then I got back and got caught up in like Sophia stuff and just entirely forgot about it. <clears throat> and then when I went online like later that night, I saw on the Discord about people talking about it. I was like, oh shit. So I watched it without like looking up stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I'm I'm excited. I mean, Resident Evil, one of my favorite series. I'm I don't. I like the over the shoulder stuff like Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil 2 and 3 remake, you know, more than like Resident Evil 7 first person shooter, but so so this is first person shooter. So I'm I'm not really I mean I'm excited, but I'd rather it not be, but that's fine. Uh everyone's loving that vampire girl. The thirst, Steve. The thirst for the vampires. It's ridiculous. It's At first I was like I don't think she's actually tall. I think she I think Capcom just didn't like has this weird screenshot incorrect, but that's not true. Did you play the demo? No. So it's PS five exclusive, right? Yeah. It's only on PS five right now. Apparently it's coming to like other things, but it's really, it's like, it's like 30 minutes of just walking around. Like there's no combat. Um, and it's more like atmosphere sort of check. Like it looks awesome. Like the castle, like the area, like what you're in looks awesome. It's more like the other, you meet some of the other sisters or whatever they are, like the vampire ladies and, Mm -hmm. It looks sweet. I'm excited. Um, demo is whatever. Like I played it. It was like 45 minutes, and then I was like, oh, "Cool." And then I, just, you know, got rid of it. Um, and uh, and then they announced that like Resident Evil versus Reverb? versus Reverb? yeah, Reverb? and it's just like man, like it's a multiplayer game. Yeah, it's like a four versus four multiplayer game, and everyone online is just like. Like, why are you guys doing, like, why, why this? <laughs> like, everyone wants an outbreak. Like, Resident Evil already did, like, a really great co-op outbreak series, Outbreak 1 and 2, but it was on PS2 when, like, no one really did online stuff. Mm. And now, people were like, do this now when, like, co-op things are great. And they do, you know, Resistance, which was asymmetrical and probably dead now, I don't know. And probably. and this, and it's just like, this isn't what we want. And then there's now there's also concern because Resistance was part of Resident Evil 3 Remake. Right. And Resident Evil 3 remake was like four hours long. Oh. And now this multiplayer mode is part of Resident Evil 8. And now people are like, oh, does that mean mm. Resident Evil 8 is also going to be super short? Well, how long was Resident Evil 7? Uh, I, 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 I don't like... know. I didn't. I beat it the first week. So I don't think it was super long. But I had like, I had played, I had, you had to beat Resident Evil 3 remake like five times to platinum it. I had done that and got the platinum in under 15 hours. Because allegedly, Resident Evil Seven took ten hours to beat. Yeah, I would. Yeah, eight to ten hours, I would think. Um, but my first playthrough Resident Evil Three Remake was like under just under five hours. Huh. So, um, people, are, there's a little concern of that, which you know, given their last multiplayer bundled game, I could see. But apparently, I don't think Resistance has been sold separately. You have to buy three, whereas I. It, Apparently, with this one, it's just going to be free to Resident Evil 8 owners, but then you could still buy it separately. So Okay, okay. Anyway, I am very interested in 8. I like 7 a lot, and I prefer first-person horror to third-person. The yeah. trailer made me feel like by the end of it, you got like multi, you got like a arsenal that you're just going through mowing people down with. I, I wonder how action it's going to get, because yeah. the start of Resident Evil 7 was like, it was like master class in like atmospheric horror that really f- makes you feel vulnerable. But by the yeah. end of it, you know, you got a bunch of guns and you're running around killing chainsaw guy and stuff. And yeah, all the Resident Evil's are kind of like that. Even two remake is sort of like that, right? Like you start with just a handgun and then eventually you get Magnum you get a rocket bullshit. launcher. Yeah. I am interested in Resident Evil eight and I, I'm, 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 talking to blake and david in the discord about like like what's the first game you're gonna get and i was like oh yeah little nightmares 2 comes out i'm like i love little nightmares i'll get little nightmares 2 and then i saw resident evil 8 like may right may 7th or something I'm like oh i loved resident evil 7 i'll get resident evil 8 so i think like my first two games i like buy this year are gonna be horror games two very different horror games but oh, that's uh-huh. exciting nothing before when's um when's that dishonored uh studio game oh uh, death loop it got Deathloop. delayed um, I assume they're having a lot of troubles with work from home and they all are. So they also, they have, they have studios in Texas and France. So mm, I assume, time, okay. Time difference. Current scheduled for PS five and PC May 21st, 2021. Mm. And I can honestly see it getting delayed again. Like what they're trying to do is so weird with that game that like, 
it must be a nightmare to play test, especially like like it's essentially doing all the weird power combat stuff of Dishonored, but now multiplayer. And yeah. anytime, Steve, currently as someone working on a multiplayer game, you just add online components to something like that, where like you can teleport and slow down time, and like like that, that game's got to be like a, a QA nightmare. Mm-hmm. So especially with work from home and all the stuff going on. Uh, what about yeah. um, Re- Returnal? Returnal, whatever. Returnal. Returnal. That's the uh, House Mark game. House Mark right? game. Yeah, I'm May- interested. March nineteenth. In yeah, I'm interested. I played that, it when it's... it was Storm Divers, Steve. They had a beta. <laughs> it was called Storm Divers. I don't know if Storm Divers got canceled and then it became Returnal or what happened with that game. But March nineteenth. Yeah, I don't know if it's like fifty bucks maybe, <laughs> but. It's like ninety. Know. It's like a full price game, is the one. No, thing. probably not. Then. Hmm. What about um? Hmm. I'm just naming games now. The medium is on Game Pass. Oh, if it's on Game Pass, like I will, I will check it out. If someone, if someone's even like, eh, I kind of like this. If it's on Game Pass, they'll just download it, check it out. So yeah, I'll I'm check exci- out the medium. Yeah, I'm excited for that because that's next. That's week. a that's this week, twenty eighth, yeah. right? Mm, yeah, I know what you mean though. Like it does seem like the start of. I mean, the start of the PS4 generation was like this too. Like I don't think I bought a PS4 game until like Infamous second son which i you know what it was, was for me steve march after the new consoles launched last time was titanfall and i played titanfall for like eight months every day me and my friend cody he was on the desk i was on the tv we just played titanfall every day it was oh see i didn't uh awesome i didn't, I didn't play that until i got an xbox like way later it was like oh, five man. bucks and well the that. Thing I maybe, they'll, maybe they'll do the uh maybe they'll do the last of us part two multiplayer this year and i can jump into that because Love, love the last. You should just platinum last of us too, you coward. I won't. Anyway, that's it for Discord discussion. What are you even playing, Steve? I saw you talking in the Discord that you were looking for. uh, You bought some DLC for games you had, and you were looking for other games you could play in front of Sophia. Yeah, really, just because it's just like the two criteria to play games in front of Sophia when she's just like you know playing with her toys or some shit Mm -hmm. is can I pause? Because if it's online. I don't mind screwing myself over, so like vigor and and stuff like that, I don't care. But if it's just like, you know, Apex Legends, I can't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not like bloody, so shooting is fine, but like not bloody and stuff like that. So Last of Us Two is like a terrible no go, terrible game. <laughs> um, so and then I was just kind of in some RPG mood, so I think I asked like Witcher Three, Tales of Zestaria, and um, uh, Original Divinity Sin or whatever Divinity Sin Original, whatever the hell that game. Um, and there's someone joined our Discord who's a huge from, Tales fan from Florida. Oh, I, I gotta yeah, I gotta shout, shout them out. Keep talking, I'll find it. Um, and so she's played. I think she they played a lot of Tales games, and we were talking about. And they're like, "Oh, I'm on my sixth playthrough of Tales." I was like, "Yo, I'm like, it's crazy." <laughs> so I started replaying Tales of Zestaria because, like, I I played for like three or four hours, and then of course when you go, jump back into RPG, you're just like, "What the fuck was I doing?" Yeah before i had no idea um but it's ps now it's on ps now so like you know started playing a little bit of that i'm not super far but at least i'm at least i now know where i am in the game in terms of story and stuff and know what to do next so that's good Mm -hmm. um but the really only game i played a lot this this week was shadow of the tomb raider um that's the third one yeah right it's tomb raider rise of the tomb raider shadow of the tomb raider yeah Okay. And it was the first one not done by Crystal Dynamics. Because hmm. it's actually an Eidos Montreal okay. game studio. Canadian Angle. Um, and uh, I like I actually really like these games. Like I don't know if you played the original Tomb Raider games, but they sucked. <laughs> like they were not they're not good games. I have not. Um, they're they're especially now. Like I played them even semi recently, like in the last, you know, five, six years, and they've they're not good. <laughs> um but the, the the this new trilogy i really really like because i like how it's like metroidvania and like you can go back and stuff and mm-hmm. i like the open world but still like linear and mm-hmm. stuff like i was really just that's why i kind of don't like uncharted 4 and 3 because i was just like tomb raider now does this better than you guys mm-hmm. um and and like the weapons are better and, and things like that so i'm playing shadow and it's like it's over the top more so like the original the the first one in this new series was just like you're on an island and this island is fucked up it's basically lost Mm-hmm. and then yeah like, i, pl- I now played the first one i i know the yeah. first one that's it though and now it's kind of getting bigger with like this other organization also trying to do stuff and it's not like the story wasn't as good in rise it's not as good in shadow but it's still fun like the gameplay wise i still really dig it so it's 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 good um it's on game pass or no sorry i originally played on game pass got about 
couple hours in, and now it was the PS Plus game. So I got the DLC because um, it was also on sale, and uh, it's fun. And I'll you know I'll play and beat it, and then kind of just move on. I also did buy Death Stranding though, which I haven't Ooh. gotten into. Is that game Ooh. violent? I don't even know. Like, is there even combat if in that game? You can. It's I don't like it. Like it's very like he's not a a fighter. Like there's things you can get to like take out the people who try and attack you, but it's not it's not meant to be. Right. All right. Well, I, I down I downloaded that because I have my friend was standing that game hard, and <laughs> I was like, "Get Last of Us 2. And then he read all the like leaks and stuff, and he's just like, eh, 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 and I'm like, "Do it, do it." And I was like, "I'll get Death Stranding if you get Last of Us 2. So we both like screenshot <laughs> us purchasing the game <laughs> or whatever. So he got Last of Us Two on Amazon, and I got Death Stranding. So I'm gonna play that in, like this week or whatever. Death Stranding's a lot, man. Like I remember you told me. And just some of the fans, it's still Konami being like Konami. Here's yeah. here's a question. Yeah. When I start the game, do I need to have like three hours yeah. dedicated to starting this game? Yeah, you need you need like three <sighs> to five hours before you get to like a place you feel comfortable saving. Fuck. That yeah. was the thing. I was I was thinking of playing it last night at like one AM and I was like, no. Ah, like No, 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 no. Do I I was just like I wanna go to bed like, soon. Can, like can clear I start an afternoon game? to start that game. Oh my god. This, it's that's so hard for that. me to do. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Oh my yeah, lord! Well, we'll see. Anyways, what I've about been you? playing. Uh, so my mom got me uh, one of those scratch off posters for Christmas. Um, it's like 100 best modern games, and you scratch it mm. off and then fill in a, a best out of, or like uh, out of five stars, like what you thought once you beat it. So I'm trying to play through as many of those as I can this year, and so I was like, "Tori, pick a game off there, and we'll start it." And she was like, "Horizon." I'm like, "Oh, I never beat Horizon because." Breath of the Wild came out like a week later, and it's a much better game in my opinion. So we started Horizon from the beginning. It's, it's a tough intro. I didn't. None of us were really vibing with Rost and Aloy and that little intro. But once we got to like the weird sci-fi element of it, like our working theory is that there's this like Fallout shelter that humans went into, and then stuff got bad down there. I guess mm. minor spoilers for the first hour of Horizon, which came out five years ago. And there's like clues that like. They started eating each other because they ran out of food. And so I think, and I'm going to say it here so it's on record in case I'm right. I somehow also haven't had this game spoiled for me. It came out five years ago, which is amazing. That Aloy got like put outside the Fallout Shelter, which is this like tribal town that like everyone lives at and has been raised there. And then she's going to have to get back in and like get everyone out and like join these like two communities that's my theory and that interest that's what's interesting to me about it i hate rpgs steve and the open world of this feels so open worldy in like the worst way like oh these are the quick save points these are the collectibles i find everywhere these are the the camps i clear these are the towers i collect and the art the rpg part of it that really messed me up is like i was just going from like story beat to story beat and if i saw a side mission along the way i would do it and i got to the story beat where you have to leave the um you have to go through the gate to like leave the starting area and it's one of these big um infector things or whatever it's got like a spinning thing on it you're supposed to fight and i like kept dying to him like what's going on and then i checked the quest and it's like recommended level 12 and i was level 10 and that just felt so bad to me because i'd already beaten like two of those things earlier in the story and like it's not that i'm not good enough at like i know the spots to shoot it at but they just like run up and like instant knock me over because of some arbitrary level i haven't so i have to go back and like grind some side missions to get to level 12 to get back this thing and beat it even though i already beat it and have proven i can beat it because some number's not high enough and that just feels bad and i don't like that but i'm gonna go back to it because i'm interested in this story and it is a it is a really cool story and like cool scenario and and, so you beat it right yeah oh yeah yeah am i am i am i like warm um i mean i don't want to say like okay it's, okay it's just like just i i liked it basically it was it's cool it's a cool setting for sure okay so that's what i've been playing on the console on phone i got nuts on apple arcade we've been talking about it on the show quite a bit and i don't like playing these kind of games on my phone with touch controls i will be waiting for switch or steam i got a weird bug too or like the camera in the game clipped out and I did yeah, see I, today. I think I messaged you this. Like they did patch it. So, or they okay. they the pa- There was something about like um, patched mo- uh, like p- patch touch controls or something like that. So mm-hmm. maybe the, give it another shot. I know what you mean though, because like um, 
a fold apart was like my favorite game, but like that game was way better on console than it was mm-hmm. on the phone. So I know, I know I'm going to vibe with this game so much. And so the fact I wasn't right away, just because the controls just and the pop and the tiny screen I was playing it on, I was like, Nope, Nope. I want to experience this on my switch or computer, like the way I know I'm going to enjoy. So, yeah. but yeah, the, the intro is, is it, it hit me in the same way. Like the intro to firewatch, not, not the, not the like, early intro to firewatch like once you actually get there and start walking around the woods i never I actually getting, played firewatch so i was getting vibes of that though and, and and the the art style is what really it's like a basically like one or two or like two or three like very vibrant contrasting colors like the intro for me was like purple and bright red so everything was either purple or bright red or like gradients in between it's mm. weird and so the premise is you're you're sent out to monitor the squirrels in this park and so the first step was like setting up your your camper and everything and i couldn't get past the controls it's out on apple arcade last friday coming to switch and steam first week of february so i'm waiting till then but yeah mm. if you have an ipad or an apple tv something that's like because i can connect a controller to my phone but then i have to like prop my phone up somewhere and sit really close to it if you have an ipad or apple tv and you can do it with a controller i'm sure that's like how you want to play it but otherwise mm. i would wait for switch or steam fair 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 but yeah that's it that's it for episode number 174 of the Canadian Game Devs.com podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to help us keep the site running, covering the Canadian Game Dev scene, support us over on patreon.com slash Canadian Game Devs. Back us there to get early access to the show, a bunch of other stuff, Discord perks, yada, yada. And if you back us at the $5 credited patron tier or higher, we'll put your name at the end of every episode like these amazing patrons. Thank you so much, Aaron McLeod, Canuck Play David Winter, David Nagy, Eric Beer. Check out thebotbook.com. Elizabeth Avery, Hanel, Jean Leggett, Jeff Shepstone, Jeffrey Canham, Kai Hutchins, Nicholas A. Zorko, Nav from the Academy of Games, Pixelnauts underscore Alex, Sean Hayden, and Stacey H. If you're on Apple Podcasts, drop us a review. We'd really appreciate your feedback. Just, just scroll. You're, you're on your phone right now. Just scroll down a little bit, hit the stars, and write in a little thing if you want. Uh, if you're not on Apple Podcasts, send any feedback you have to contact at uh or just hop in our Discord and let us know. Uh, you can follow the site's work at Canada Game Devs on Twitter. Canada Game Devs. Couldn't fit Canadian. There's a 15-character limit. Got and it. you can follow Steve and I. We're in the description of Canada Game Devs, so just go there. Find us if you want. Go Raptors. Go Bills, Steve. Yeah, tomorrow. Watch it by the time this is live. We'll know. We'll know. We'll know. I think, on the record, I think it'll be, um, it'll be Green Bay and... Uh, Oh, man. If, if Patrick Mahomes didn't get a concussion, it would be Green Bay versus Kansas City, um, Kansas City, which would be a fucking awesome. Either way, actually, no matter what, this is going to be a fucking great Super Bowl. But I think it's going to be Green Bay and Bills, which I think will be a really, really good Super Bowl. So I'm I'm excited. And I and go Bills, man. Go it's Bills. Sweet. And, and Browns. It was, oh, it, that was tough on the Browns, but, you know. I watched that game. That's the first football game I've watched since the Super Bowl last year. Oh, really? Fun fact, yeah. we found out so, uh, Heather was pregnant with Sophia on Super Bowl in 2019. Nice. So Wow. It's been two years. Well, since we found out she was pregnant. So then you were like, shit, got to get someone to, to help me with this site. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I was just like, <laughs> I barely, the site's like slowly dying even without a kid. So I better get uh, little Steven in here and help out. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Two weekends, still Super Bowl weekend, so got that to look forward to. Yeah, I don't know. I'm fading, Steve. We recorded an interview before this with uh, Alonzo, uh, or sorry, Pablo Alonzo, a uh, senior designer at Digital Extremes on Warframe. Uh, we're still also, I'm finishing editing the interview with Blake, uh, art, art technical artist at Bioware on Dragon Age 4. I'm going to do them every other Friday, Steve, is an interview. And then the Monday for patrons, Wednesday for everyone else for the podcast. And I think that'll work going forward. Nice. Space it out. Stretch the content. Thanks for listening, everyone. Stay tuned for those interviews. Leave a review. Have a great week. Stay safe. Stay in place. Stay sanitary. That's the other S I was looking for. Good Lord, Steve. Have a great week. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the CanadianGameDevs.com podcast, episode number 147. God damn it.
I'm starting again. 